Hi, good afternoon. Am I audible? To the people at the back? Okay. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of the panel discussions and a lot of the most interesting topics were taken. And, uh, and this was the graveyard kind of session, post lunch session. So I thought let's uh, pick up something very different which could keep the audience awake. So, you know, the title as it says is Long Term Greedy and how should marketers kind of think differently in the 21st century and of course in line with the theme which is rethink, relearn and redefine. So it's just some ideas uh, from my side and it's, uh, I've got 15 minutes so I'll try and cover as much as I can. So, uh, you know, one of the things uh, right up front, right, we need to recognize what are some of the key trends which are driving change in the 21st century and looking at it from a business lens, from a marketer's lens. I've picked up three, uh, you know, for this discussion. The first one is uh, a lot of is around hyper competition, right? Uh, we all speak about how India is a large market, uh, you know, the potential customers which are out there in India. A lot of us are always focused on the demand side, right? But not enough focus is there on the supply side. Now, from a regulatory standpoint, from a government standpoint, as many market participants are out there in the marketplace, it's really, really good for them, right? It helps improve financial inclusion. It helps uh, improve uh, penetration of products. And especially given that this is a BFSI, a lot of conversations around uh, financial inclusion and stuff like that, right? However, from a marketer standpoint, what hyper competition means is it's essentially for losers. It's a loser's game. So, you know, if you're a organization in the space of BFSI and you're trying to establish a brand, your, sta your starting ground is extremely, extremely difficult. For example, in the world of life insurance, from where I come from, there are already 24 players plus two new players have come on recently. So 26 players, it's just been about 24 years since privatization, right? And a lot of regulatory changes, et cetera, which are going to happen. So there's an interesting video which uh, Peter Thiel kind of spoke about how competition drives margins down, profitability downs, and therefore makes life for a marketer really, really difficult, right? So, so that's the number one trend that we are all faced with. Uh, I mean, it's great for marketing platforms, I mean, let, right? It's great for marketing platforms, there are more budgets, more marketing budgets, but the ROI from a marketer's perspective makes it, uh, you know, continues to fall because of this hyper competition. Uh, you know, I would all advise all of you to go out and watch that video by Peter Thiel. It's almost a decade old where he kind of explains this concept in more detail. Uh, the second one is consumer inattention, right? I mean, it's almost an epidemic. Like, if I look at, I mean, people across ages, they're continuously scrolling, right? 10 seconds, uh, shots, reels, whatever you have to communicate, you have to communicate it in a matter of microseconds, not even, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, half a minute, a minute is forgotten, right? Everything is in such a small span of time, right? And that is what consumes a lot of marketers on a day-on-day -day basis, right? What is the click-through rate that I'm getting? You know, what is the impressions that I'm getting? You don't even know what's happening out there, but these are just numbers and statistics uh, which get thrown at you. But this again is a reality that as marketers, uh, we have to kind of live with and deal with. So, so this is the second important trend uh, that, uh, you know, we need to kind of manage as marketers. The third one is technology, right? And technology has always been kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of moving ahead, right? Uh, moving mankind ahead. But uh, what has happened, I mean, we spoke about the metaverse just three years back and it's already probably, you know, nobody's interested in it or Web3. Uh, now everybody is after chat GPT is speaking about Gen AI, right? How can I apply Gen AI to my business? How can I kind of uh, uh, leverage AI to kind of uh, come out with more intelligent creatives? Uh, how can I write a script using Gen AI? Can I get an answer or a response uh, using artificial intelligence? Because a lot of it is kind of codified information, right? And all the large language models out there, essentially whatever field you are in, whether you're running a publication, whether you're running a customer service uh, center, uh, whether you're a creative agency, whether you're a production house, whatever stream of marketing or business that you're looking at, you know, there's somebody out there, uh, maybe in the startup world today, out there trying to create a tool, an automated tool, which is essentially conspiring to do your job a few years down the line. 
So essentially, these are the three trends, uh, hyper-competition, consumer inattention, and technology, which are going to decide how marketers will thrive, survive, or perish uh, you know, in the coming years, right? So the implications, what are the implications, right? Uh, hyper-competition means uh, your brand, if it has to stay right up there, has to be consistently communicating to the customer uh, in the evolving societal context, right? Your life cycle of the brand is going to get shorter and shorter because there are a lot more competing brands out there trying to kind of acquire or vying for attention of the customer, right? Which itself is kind of becoming smaller and smaller and it is resulting in a waste of marketing dollars, right? So if you, as a CMO, go to a CFO and explain how marketing is adding value, I think the ROI in some sense is continuously dropping, especially because of, uh, you know, one and two, right? Now, what all marketers probably have been trying to do, along with the wider ecosystem, is kind of trying to use technology to then improve the ROI, right? And therefore, all the tech platforms and the media platforms come to you with some of these technology solutions where you can measure, monitor, and uh, kind of get the ROI back to where it should be. But uh, what's happening in parallel is some of these roles over a period of time uh, can really become irrelevant, and a lot of the decision-making power uh, can be exercised the peop uh, by the people who have access to some of these tools, right? And they need not be from your domain. They need not be from a marketing function or, uh, let's say, they need not be from an insurance function, right? It could be a smart engineer somewhere out there trying to kind of solve this problem uh, uh, from, for, for a business, right? So these are the implications. Now, what happens is uh, in our day-on-day -day jobs, right, uh, we don't really recognize the implications of some of these trends, right? We are essentially very short-term focused. How many emails went out, how many posts, likes, uh, you know, followers garnered, impressions uh, served. I mean, a lot of time is spent on the very finer detail of the brand. I'm not saying it's not important, right? There's a reason it's called performance marketing, because it can be measured instantly. The ROI can be measured very, very instantly. And, uh, you know, the decision-making uh, power or the decision-making approach there is pretty well carved out, right? You can kind of test, learn, experiment, do a lot of things. But what happens is when you kind of get too short-term focused, uh, sometimes you tend to cut corners in what is what I call being long-term greedy and working in the long-term, uh, longer-term interests of the brand, right? And therefore, my advice to marketers is typically is whenever you're faced with a challenge like this, invert the problem, right? And solve the problem which is being caused by those three trends. Again, repeating those, hyper-competition, consumer inattention, and uh, technology, right? Just think about instead of being short-term greedy, which is where most of your competitors are going to be focused on, how can you be long-term greedy and establish a brand that can survive for 100 years, right? The core essence of a brand, you're not a brand unless you can charge a customer a premium over your competitors. In the world of banking and financial services, most products tend to be commodities, right? You can have a different customer experience approach, you can, uh, you know, kind of have a better technology, but fundamentally the products tend to be commodities, right? And how do you ensure that your brand is a differentiator out there so that if you, I mean, deem it fit for your business, you can charge a premium to the customer, an extra 5, 10, 20 percent, whatever is that premium that you wish to charge. That is the value that a marketer or a brand adds to the organization, right? If we don't do that, uh, you know, as a marketing fraternity, we would have failed in our uh, jobs. And if you kind of, uh, yeah, so the answer comes back is, uh, how do you be a contrarian, right? I spoke about being a, a lot of focus being on the tangible clicks, likes, followers, impressions, and so on and so forth. Just shift a little about uh, from there and focus on building the intangibles, right? Intangibles are some things which are not kind of measurable on a day-on-day -day basis. You might not see uh, it in some Excel sheet or some report on a daily basis. You might just see some, some of those trends playing out across, let's say, years, not necessarily in the short term, but directionally as long as you're kind of inching upwards, you're moving in the right direction, right? So focusing on the intangibles, which is what historically a lot of the consumer brands were doing in the previous century, right? Those principles still hold true. 
I think in the era of technology, we've kind of uh, mo shifted too much towards performance marketing and lost a lot of a focus on uh, the intangibles or the brand, as uh, uh, one may call it, right? So uh, there are four things that I've kind of outlined here. I think a deep focus on consumers, right? Every time you take a product or you launch a product in the market, uh, it's extremely important that it's, uh, or a service offering, it's extremely important that the consumer is at the center of it, not just from a product perspective, but also from a communication perspective. A lot of the focus uh, in BFSI tends to be not on the consumer, right? It tends to be on, you can say, the rational uh, element, right? It can be an interest rate of a fixed deposit. It could be an, a return, right? Or it could be a life cover amount rather than on the consumer, uh, uh, you know, or their needs uh, per se, right? So number one, I think just bring back the focus on the customer in terms of marketing communication. Focus on, uh, you know, typically what one would do in ethnographic studies, a, a day in the life of a customer. How do you make it more relevant to as large a universe of customers as uh, you can, because BFSI brands essentially are mass brands, right? Now, they're, they're, they're not niche brands. Uh, uh. Number two, I think uh, differentiation is very, very important, uh, especially in a commodified space. I think uh, finding that sweet spot in a hyper-competitive space is extremely, extremely important, right? For us at HDFC Life, over the years, the way the brand has evolved, the way it has been built, we can transcend uh, it on two axes, both on the axis of innovation and on the axis of trust. So we can compete with the public sector players at one level and also with the private sector players at the other level, right? So for each brand, you have to find their sweet spot uh, based on what works for the brand ethos and a lot of it might come from legacy, parentage. You can be a new generation plan, next generation, uh, insurance company or a BFSI player and targeted at a younger audience. You can be a direct-to-consumer play. All that is possible, but be sure that your brand is differentiated uh, from uh, other brands, right? Uh, uh, the third thing that I often speak about, and I kind of briefly uh, kind of alluded to it in my first uh, comment, is content remains important, but context is even more important. By context, I mean the context in which society is how uh, the people in society are living, uh, you know. Bring out real stories out there. Uh, a lot of times either, you know, the stories that you depict on screen or in your marketing communication has to reflect the stories of consumers, right? And that really hits a chord. Please understand, there's a lot of media fragmentation today and the budgets are kind of limited, right? You have only so much budget and from a media planning perspective, it becomes really, really difficult to figure out where to kind of uh, uh, put your uh, rupees out there, right? And how do you kind of plan for that? So therefore, uh, you know, the first part is persuasion, right, of your creative. And persuasion works if it's uh, in the moment, in the sense that it reflects the societal context at a particular uh, point of time, right? Uh, so, so that's number one. The second is virality, right? Because your budgets are constrained, uh, now obviously you can't plan for virality, but because it's operating in a certain context, you're hoping that a lot of the target audience uh, who want to kind of, uh, this, this film or this communication is targeted at, would kind of forward this film to other, uh, other folks, right, in the larger community. Uh, we experienced it when we did the COVID batch campaign, for example, right? A lot of people thought uh, that it won't work, it was melodramatic, but when the results came out, I mean, the, it was through the roof, right? I mean, people were sending me the ads when, uh, a lot of people who didn't know that I worked with HDFC Live were sending me the ads. Teenagers were sending it, families were uh, sending it, teachers were sharing it, uh, because it kind of struck a chord, right? And similarly, sometimes uh, you have to figure out the business context, right? The business context, for example, if there's a huge focus on protection, right? And let's say as a business strategy, you want to get deeper into markets. So in India, typically cricket uh, works of Bollywood works typically, right? Uh, so for us, Rishabh Pant worked really, really well as a brand ambassador. When we said that protection is important, he had just had an accident. Uh, we waited for him to be ready for about six months and then brought out his story out on screen. So, so that again, uh, you know, uh, worked with us on a fairly uh, good scale. So those are some examples. And last but not the least, I think, uh, uh, stray true to your roots, but evolve with the times. So for example, for us at HDFC Life, Saruta KGO was conceived 20 years back, it's still relevant, continues to stay uh, relevant uh, even today. 
but we have evolved with the times, with the society, and uh, you know, our ads, our campaigns reflect uh, you know, a different interpretation of Sarutake Geo, maybe a bounce back campaign or a comeback uh, campaign. Yeah, so, so that, uh, I have seven seconds left, so <laughs> this is uh, in some sense a summary. Uh, address disruptions in the marketplace, think differently, think contrarian, build uh, on the intangibles, be long-term uh, greedy, and build content that reflects your brand's core values and differentiates versus peers. So thank you so much uh, and for being a patient audience.